Chris Valedictorian, Kayatri Parenthood. Shake the hand and then look at the camera. <laughs> Dr. Jones, Mr. Julian, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, students, and of course, the graduating class of 2017, good evening. When you think about it, I am the only obstacle preventing you from leaving this ceremony. <laughs> so I'll keep my words brief. On behalf of the graduating class, I'd like to thank the many teachers and Ms. Wager who helped organize tonight's prize giving. It is a distinct honor to be your valedictorian this evening and be a part of this year's graduating class. When I was preparing this speech, I was initially quite cautious about giving advice because I don't have the knowledge or life experience to be in the position to tell you how to live your life. However, I quickly got over this fear <laughs> and have decided to share my pearls of wisdom with you anyway. Yes, pearls of wisdom, that is how grandiose I can be. <laughs> Today I want to talk to you all about laughter. I believe the most important lesson our school has taught us was how to have a laugh and how it can help us overcome even the hardest of times. I'll tell you about how laughter has united and inspired us at the school and how it will carry us forward as we bid farewell to Strathcona Tweedsmere. Firstly, however, I'd like to talk a little bit about laughter itself. You might ask what I would know about laughter. You would not be far off. I don't know a lot about what's funny. But Google does. And it told me that all of us should be laughing more than we do, partly due to the tremendous physiological benefits of laughter. And that's no joke. I promise you it gets better. <laughs> lowers stress hormones, relaxes your muscles, and prevents heart disease. It prevents heart disease, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. Music. <laughs> it's, also the, it's also the best way to ease anxiety and tension and strengthen your resilience. Laugh even if you can't find the funny. A Georgia State University study found that simulated health, ha, laughter helped improve mental illnesses. You could try laugh therapy, or laugh yoga, or simply laugh at other people's jokes especially if they're not funny. In fact, you should start that right now, or else this is going to be a tense speech. <laughs> Our teachers know the importance of laughter more than anyone else, and their sense of humor inspires us to laugh at ourselves as well. Our warm memories of our teachers' quirks will never cease to make us giggle. Like Mr. Letterer jumping on a desk to prove a point, the point being that he's never too old to jump on a desk. <laughs> And Mr. Zealous keeping us up to date on the women's netball team results in his emails, whether that be the championship, the finals, the semifinals, the quarterfinals, the playoffs, or the friendly. We don't even have a netball team in SCS. <laughs> He's just highly motivated. Or how about Mr. Dice always using those weirdly specific sports metaphors when he's explaining a stoichiometric relationship? So if there are five basketballs and you take one, you wait for the hoop and then you miss the shot completely, is your name Richard Kashmirian? <laughs> Some things continue to surprise us. Who knew Mr. McKay listens to Kendrick Lamar? Or that Mr. Mercer tap dances to Happy by Pharrell Williams, generously accompanied by Mr. Shaw on staff karaoke nights. Every teacher has given us a lifetime of memories. Mr. Fink's affable loyalty to the royal families of the world, <laughs> Miss Melton's sing-song rhymes that taught us complex equations and differential calculus. Mr. Carez's absolute refusal to speak in anything but French. And Mr. Boulian's wildly entertaining history lectures. I will miss you, good sir. <laughs> All our teachers will be sorely missed, for they were not only our source of knowledge, but a source of inspiration. They taught us how to live in laughter, but never to sacrifice our personalities in fear of being mocked. We hope to make them proud as we pursue the passions they instilled in us. They've never saved themselves, but they truly are life-changing. And they, despite what they say, will always miss our class the most. <laughs> in fact, Mr. Doubt was so shaken by our departure that he's decided he's leaving with us. <laughs> Not only does laughter inspire, however, it 
also unites us in times of hardship. A particularly challenging time for me was the physical education department's decision to have a three kilometer run in grade eight. <laughs> Looking at this physical specimen, <laughs> it's hard to imagine that I had a rough time in gym class. <laughs> But my chubby little grade 8 self vehemently refused to accept the authority of the gym teacher's decision. In one of these weekly runs, I'd apparently decided I'd had enough. I'd done the run before, and knew it did not bring me much joy. <laughs> Additionally, I was starting to see two of everything, and my legs felt the need to collapse underneath me. By the time I fainted in the ravine, the rest of the class had completed the run, and were waiting for me to arrive. Alone in my absence, the teacher sent a search party of students for me, who ran the entire course twice trying to find me. <laughs> However, my melodramatic self had simply gotten up after a few seconds and walked the 200 meters back to the starting point. <laughs> face when she saw me walking back. It was a mixture of disbelief, bewilderment, and confusion as she tried to understand how running 200 meters can bring someone this much physical exhaustion. <laughs> we both looked at each other for a moment and then instantly burst out laughing. <laughs> Looking back, I can't imagine the frustration all of you felt, but you still had the kindness and patience and pity probably <laughs> to laugh it off and mock me later. It served as a reminder that laughter can unite our class, even in the toughest of times. It has been said before that we in this school are like a family because of our share shared values, but perhaps more than that, it is because of our shared ability to laugh at ourselves. Laughter unified our class from an early point and ignited a culture of support and everlasting friendship. When we were stuck on a math question, we always had Emily Neal to help us understand where we messed up. Just like we always had Elliot Chu to laugh, scribble on our homework, and run away. <laughs> Can't believe it'd be heckled in my valedictorian speech. <laughs> a Blaze Evelyn was always there for us when our moms needed someone to compare us to after report cards came out. <laughs> By the way, I have Blaze's autograph here, so if anyone wants it in 10 years, it'll be worth a million dollars. <laughs> laughter instills compassion in people, and our class is a stunning example of that. I remember the first time I forgot to wear casual clothes on a casual day, and showed up proudly in my press blazer and iron kilt to perplexed expressions and stifled laughter. Mortified, I turned to my friends, who stopped sniggering long enough to lend me their clothes and comfort me in my humiliation. My fond memories with you all have made me realize that I'm not the most qualified person to be up here. I don't have DJ's charisma, fun sense of humor, or Evan Cusignoris' last name. <laughs> <laughs> Regrettably, I don't have James Lockery's hair, or even Beatrice's British accent. Uh, Tony's badminton chops are unparalleled, and Claire will always laugh at me when we're running, as will Evan Badney, or James King, well, anyone really. I can't adequately represent this class because our class was unique in its ways and embraced laughter, friendship, and all-round excellence. I have no doubt that we will take on life's challenges with the sense of humor of a hyena. <laughs> they laugh. <laughs> <laughs> However, I am aware that it can sometimes be difficult to laugh in times of uncertainty. All of us have moments of insecurity and doubt regarding our future. In these moments, it is necessary to depend on the words of a pioneer of our times to guide us into the real world. Me. <laughs> I stressed about what to say to you because I knew my words would direct your actions for the rest of your life. <laughs> then I decided to impart with you the insightful words of comedian Eddie Izzard. Never put a sock in a toaster. <laughs> He's right, you shouldn't. I've tried it. <laughs> no. Uh, in all sincerity, the following words inspired me at a low point in my life this school year. It was sometime around early November. Mark Twain once said that humanity has unquestionably one really effective weapon against power, persuasion, and corruption. Laughter. Against the assault of laughter, nothing can stand. Living our life with the goal of making others happy cannot possibly make us unsuccessful. With our hard work, 
determination, and unconquerable gaiety. I have no doubt that all of us will persevere in our aspirations, and that the world in turn will greet us with open arms. Inevitably, our time at Strathcona Tweedsmere School has come to an end, and I can't believe that it's the last time all of us will be sitting together in this theater in our formal uniforms. But it was Dr. Seuss that said this, and I quote, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. I'll need a lot more, sorry, I'll need a lot more courage than this not to cry because it's over. But then the image of Mr. Mercer tap dancing pops back into my head and I can smile again. <laughs> Thank you to our generous teachers for the weekends, early mornings and late evenings they spent away from their families. The amazing staff that make this school the second home that it is. And to our incredible parents who spend every waking minute ensuring our happiness. As for the class of 17, I wish you a lifetime of success. But not too much, for I do not want to look like the has-been at the reunion. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Blaze? <laughs> I would like to close with the three most anticipated words at the end of every weekly assembly. Nil missy optimum. Thank you for your time.